Happy 4th of July! Most people in the United States celebrate the 4th of July. But do you know exactly why the holiday is so important to our country? Have you ever wondered why the 4th of July is a holiday? Before that date, in 1776, the 13 American colonies were part of an empire of more than 32 lands ruled by the King of England. The Declaration of Independence, which was signed by members of the Continental Congress on July 4, 1776, showed that the colonies wanted to be free. But it took a war for this to actually happen. Now let's go back in time. The Declaration of Independence was in 1776. Let's go back to the 1600s. Do you remember the Pilgrims or the Puritans? Well, in the 1600s, a long time ago in England, there was a group of people who all went to the same church and they were called Puritans. They wanted to live their lives like God wanted them to. The things that the Puritans did were considered extreme by the rest of the members of the Church of England. And there was a king of England who thought everyone should go to his church, the Church of England. And he got mad when the Puritans or the pilgrims didn't want to go to his church. He said, you go to my church or you go to jail. So a lot of them did go to jail. And look, in this picture you can see he's standing in stocks. And people would throw rotten vegetables and eggs at them. So the people decided they were going to leave England and go to Holland. And they were looking for religious freedom. But while they were in Holland, their children started speaking Dutch. And they were becoming like the Dutch people. So they decided to go back to England. And the pilgrims returned to England, and the king granted them permission to go to the New World, which was America. So the pilgrims rented a ship, and they left England for America on September 6, 1620, and their ship was called the Mayflower. So they were coming to America for religious freedom. They arrived in a place called Plymouth, which is in the state of Massachusetts. In 1776, there was about 2.5 million people all along the east coast of America. This is a map of America, and to the right is the east. To the left is the west. And there was about 2.5 million people there. So from 1620 to 1776, over a hundred years, now we've got two and a half million people living in the New World or America. Our country was not always the big nation it is now. The land was there and the rivers and the mountains, the lakes and the forests. But part of it still belonged to the Indians who lived here for a long, long time. Part of it had been settled by people from Britain and from other countries across the ocean. And that was mainly that east coast. And in this picture, you can see England. Do you see England? It's on the right. And Europe. That's where a lot of the people came from to go to the New World, to America. On the east coast of America, there were 13 colonies that belonged to Britain or England. Each one was like a little separate country, and each had its own name. Let's see, what were those colonies? There was number one, New Hampshire. Number two, Massachusetts. Number three, Rhode Island. Number four, Connecticut. Number five, New York. Number six, New Jersey. Number seven, Pennsylvania. Number eight, Delaware. Number nine, Maryland. Number 10, Virginia. Number 11, North Carolina. Number 12, South Carolina. And number 13, Georgia. 13 colonies along the east coast of America. 
There came a time when some of the 13 colonies did not want to belong to Britain or the English king. They didn't think that men across the sea should make any laws or rules for them. So the colonists grew tired of following British rules. England controlled the trade and told people where they could settle. They forced the colonists to provide housing and food for the British soldiers sent to protect them. Since 1760, the colonists had also had to pay taxes for various products. Under a law called the Stamp Act of 1765, they had to pay extra money for newspapers, land deeds, card games, dice games, even for graduation diplomas. So England was making money off of the settlers in America and making laws way over there in England, not even knowing what the situation was like in America. So the colonists got tired of it. They said, we want to be free from England. The first settlers in the colonies liked having British help and protection at first. The British soldiers were there to help them fight the American Indians, right? And to keep other countries like France and Spain from invading them. It was like your mother watching over you. However, as you grow older, you're going to want more freedom to make your own decisions. And that's how many of the colonists felt. The war that the colonists fought against England was called the American Revolution. Some call it the War of Independence or the Revolutionary War. It's usually viewed as a struggle between the American colonies and King George III of England who ruled the British Empire. But it was also a civil war, a war that's fought between people of the same country. There were people from many different backgrounds living in the British American colonies. That's in America, but they were colonies of England or Britain. And not all of them thought it was a good idea to break away from England. If you and your family remained loyal to the king, you were called loyalists. If you and your family wanted to be free from the king and the British rule, you were called a patriot. The colonists had no direct way to complain to England since no one from the colonies was allowed to be a member of the British Parliament or their government which made the rules. So there was a man named James Otis. He was a Boston lawyer and he stirred up the colonists when he said they should not pay taxes until they could send a person to speak for the colonies in Parliament. Taxation without representation is tyranny he exclaimed. Some people thought it was time for the colonies as a group to protest British taxes. And in September of 1774, men from the colonies met together in Carpenter's Hall in Philadelphia called the Continental Congress. This group became the informal government of the colonies. So the colonies grouped together and they made themselves a government. Bad feelings continued. Finally, British soldiers and patriots fought at Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts on April 19, 1775. This was the start of the American Revolution. They were revolting against England or Britain. The colonists formed an army and they went to war with Great Britain or England. And this war is called the American Revolutionary War. It lasted from 1775 to 1783. The men who represented the 13 colonies talked a long time and they thought a long time trying to decide whether they could be free and independent states. They chose a committee of men to write down the things they believed in and all the reasons why they wanted to be free from England. This document was called the Declaration of Independence. And here's, you can see on the screen here, a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And that was first published on July 4th, 1776. 
Over 240 years ago, these words were read at Independence Hall in Philadelphia, USA. And this is part of the Declaration of Independence. It says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So did you see that? They wrote in there that all men are created equal and that they're given or given by their creator rights that they should be able to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Declaration of Independence was written mainly by Thomas Jefferson and it was adopted by the Continental Congress in 1776. The Declaration of Independence listed 27 ways the king had hurt the colonies. The Patriots agreed with the Declaration. They now viewed the colonies as 13 states, making one nation. So they got together, 13 colonies, and they became one nation. After the Declaration of Independence was adopted in 1776, Patriot families celebrated the 4th of July as a holiday. Towns planned a day of festivities including gun salutes, patriotic speeches, dances, sporting events, bell ringing, bonfires, and lighted candles in the windows of their houses. Sometimes a fireworks display would end with a burst of 13 rockets. Congress decided to form a government with a president, not a king. England had a king, King George III, and they decided to have a president and a different form of government. They looked to George Washington, which they had made the leader of their army, and he became the first president of the United States in 1789, and he was president until 1797. So remember what it says in the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. They're endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, life. Let's think about life for a minute. Look at John 3.16. It talks about life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 What about liberty? Liberty means freedom. And John 8.36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. John 8.36 And the pursuit of happiness. Psalm 144.15 says, Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And in Proverbs 16, verse 20, it says, Whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. So with the Lord we have life, we have freedom, and we have true happiness. The 4th of July is a day when Americans celebrate their freedom. We celebrate our freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and many other freedoms in fun ways on the 4th of July. But I want to tell you about a more wonderful freedom. It's the most important freedom in the universe, and it's not just for Americans. This freedom is for people all around the world. I'm talking about freedom from sin. Jesus said, sin makes us servants or slaves. John eight thirty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin or a slave of sin. We're all born wanting to sin by doing things like forcing people to do things our way, cheating to get what we want, disobeying our parents, Sin is like an evil king that controls our lives and makes us slaves. It keeps us from enjoying friendship with God and causes awful things like sickness, war, 
pain and death. It'll even trap us far away from God in a terrible place forever when we die. That's the final penalty or punishment for sin. Sin keeps us from being free to enjoy God. Well, look, here is a crown. That represents God. God is the perfect and powerful king of all things. He created people like you and me. He loves you, and he wants you to be with him. But God is so perfect that sin cannot stay close to him. So he sent his perfect son, Jesus, to free people from the horrible power of sin. And now look, here's a cross. Jesus destroyed sin's power over us by taking our sin's punishment. He loved you so much that he let himself be nailed to a cross where he was killed and separated from God to take your place. But sin wasn't powerful enough to trap Jesus or make him a slave. Look, on the third day, an angel opened the tomb where he'd been buried to show that it was empty. Jesus is alive. He came back to life. Hundreds of people saw him. And then he returned to God's home where he rules as the most powerful king ever. Jesus proved he's way more powerful than sin. He is the son of God and he can give you the greatest freedom of all. Freedom from sin. First, he can free you from sin's penalty. That's another word for punishment. The penalty or punishment for sin is to die and be trapped away from God forever. But Jesus paid the penalty for you by dying on the cross in your place. He promises if you believe he's really God's son who took your punishment by dying for your sin and coming back to life, he will set you free from sin and you'll never be separated from God. Jesus frees you from sin's penalty. And look, the word power. He also gives you freedom from sin's power. Once you believe in Jesus and he sets you free from sin, he sends God's Holy Spirit to live inside of you and help you do what's right and enjoy fellowship with God. The more you enjoy Jesus, the less you enjoy sin. Jesus frees you from sin's power. And look, presence. And someday, Jesus will get rid of all sin and all bad things forever. He sets you free from the presence of sin. In the future, everyone who's believed in Jesus to save them from sin will live with him in a perfect place where sin never causes problems because there is never any sin. There won't be sickness, sadness, pain, or death. Anyone who believes in Jesus will be free from the presence of sin forever. Look at this word, free. If you believed in Jesus to save you from sin, he set you free from sin's punishment. You can trust that he will never leave you and he will give you strength to enjoy him more than you enjoy sin. He gave you freedom from sin's power and gave you his power to do what's right. And someday, he will take you to live in his perfect home where you'll be free from the very presence of sin forever. That's the best kind of freedom. You can celebrate it every day by thanking God for it and telling other people about it. And if you've never believed in Jesus to save you from sin, you can believe in him today and be set free from sin. Believing in Jesus means trusting that he took the penalty for your sin when he died and came back to life. Only Jesus can set you free from sin. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. There's an old song that goes, I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. 
So on this 4th of July, as we're celebrating our freedom here in the United States, our 4th of July, Day of Independence, let's celebrate being free from sin and having Jesus in our heart and having everlasting life. And if you've never accepted Jesus, you can do it right now. Just pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me and rising again to set me free. I repent from all of my sins. Come into my life and make me born again. Set me free. I receive today your free gift of everlasting life. I want to be one of your children. Help me to live for you. Thank you so much, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, and he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. The 4th of July, or Independence Day, is a fun summer holiday, a day when you may see lots of flags, parades, and fireworks. But have you ever wondered what the celebration is about? Back in 1775, the 13 American colonies rebelled against the control of Great Britain and sparked a war, known in the United States as the Revolutionary War. After a year of fighting, the Second Continental Congress took a vote and decided that it was time for the colonies to officially declare their independence from British rule. They wanted to be free and to be in charge of their own government. On June 11, 1776, the Continental Congress appointed Thomas Jefferson, along with Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Robert Livingston, and Roger Sherman, to write a document to explain why they were declaring their independence. Thomas Jefferson wrote most of it, but after some changes by the other members of the committee, they presented it to Congress on June 28th. At first, not everyone agreed to vote for independence. They argued and debated the issue for days. Finally, on July 2nd, the agreement to declare independence passed. Congress made a few changes to the words of the document, and two days later, on July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was officially adopted. Not only did the Declaration of Independence state that the colonies would no longer be under British rule, it said that governments only exist for the good of the people they govern, and that all people are equal. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Because July 4th is the day that the colonies said that they were free from Great Britain, the 4th of July is sometimes called America's birthday. Every year since then, Independence Day has been celebrated on July 4th with parades, music, gun salutes, cannon fire, and yes, even fireworks. I hope you enjoyed learning about the 4th of July today. Goodbye till next time.